Welcome to Jongets Games. This is my update vlog for September 2020, and as you can see, I'll be covering a few different things today. Uh, now, I do want to mention that if you'd prefer to listen to this vlog instead of watch it, then you can do so by searching for the Jongets Games podcast wherever you normally listen to podcasts. I'd also like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Uh, on top of that, if you'd like to directly support this channel and the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with cool bonuses like voting on a few of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's now jump into updates, and the first of these is a Patreon update. It's going to be slightly longer than normal, though. Uh, to start off, there were seven new people that joined into the campaign over this last month, so a big thank you to these new people and also to the hundreds of people who are still supporting the campaign. Um, now, this is a little bit longer than normal because I do want to mention that this was a pretty rough month for the Patreon campaign, and I, I know that's because I made some big announcements last month about um, potential changes, well, I guess real changes that I'm making to the channel in the short run, and potential changes in the long run, and um, a lot of people pulled their support on Patreon, which I totally understand. Um, overall, it looked like about 22 people um, uh, left, and the overall support went down by over $100 a month, which, you know, again, I totally understand, but it was still a bit of a hit. <laughs> uh, I do, um, I've been working on this Patreon campaign for many years at this point, and it's been slowly growing over time. Um, not as much as some of my contemporaries, but um, it's still going up, and I'm sure it will continue to go up now after this big change. But um, either way, it, this was a, a bit of a, a fall down month, but I'm hoping things uh, build back up again relatively uh, quickly. Um, and again, um, any kind of support that you could give through the Patreon campaign is greatly appreciated. Even just a dollar a month can definitely add up when enough people do it. So um, anyway, let's move on from Patreon and now talk about some other um, updates. Uh, the first of these is uh, pretty cool, actually. Um, a publisher reached out to me about a month and a half ago, uh, asking me if I was interested in blind testing one of the rule books. It was a game that I had not played before, but they are uh, a publisher that I've worked with before. I'm not sure if I actually want to say who the publisher is at this point. I probably will at some point in the future, but I'm going to keep it hidden for the moment. But either way, they're a past client of mine, and they said that um, they liked the way I critiqued their rule books in the past and found problems when I was asking them questions about how to make my videos better to teach their games better. Um, so they figured I might be good at blind testing. So I ended up doing that, uh, and I've gone through several phases with that rulebook, and they brought me in with another rulebook to blind test, and now a third rulebook, they're actually bringing me in on the ground floor where I'm actually helping them construct the rulebook from the um, the ground, <laughs> from from nothing, essentially. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, it's, it's fun to do development style work in the industry. I do like being in the industry, um, and I'm being paid for this work, so I, I do appreciate that as well. And it's it's been a neat I don't know, diversion from standard life to a certain extent to, to go into this stuff. After thinking about this a little bit, I've realized that you could sort of distill what I do here on Jongets Games um, down to being a professional rulebook reader <laughs> because, you know, the videos that I put out, uh, the tutorials and whatnot, I need to teach the game as accurately as possible, which means I need to read the rulebook and understand it as accurately as possible. And that means I come up with a lot of questions and clarifications because I want to teach it correctly. So um, that's cool. Um, maybe this is something that will blossom into other things. Obviously, they seem to like working with me, considering I've now worked on three rulebooks for them over the last month and a half. Um, so I'm hopeful that that will continue to be a side part of John Gets Games, uh, specifically the development part, because I really do love board games, and I do love working on them and making them better overall. And a big way that you can make a board game better is by having a better rulebook. Um, so now I have a new anxiety of uh, a fear that uh, when these rulebooks come out that I had a pretty heavy hand in, uh, people might have problems with them. I don't know what's going to happen there. This is the first time I'm trying that out, so uh, uh, we'll see what happens. But either way, uh, so far, the publisher seems pretty happy with the input that I've had. We can now move on to the next update, and that has to do with the advertising that's happening on this channel. Um, astute viewers have probably noticed that ads have been showing up in the middle of my videos for the first time ever. Uh, about a year ago, I turned on ads for the first time, and they were at the very beginning of my videos, and I made sure there were no banner ads. Um, and that's been doing very well for me. I, I've been getting um, several hundred dollars a month from that, which is significant. Um, but then, I don't know, about a month ago or so, I got into a Twitter conversation with some other YouTube creators talking about these mid-roll ads, which are um, ads that play in the middle of a video. And they got me reading some stuff that, that seemed to say that these mid-roll ads can increase your overall ad revenue by two to even five times, which is a lot of money. If you start adding up a couple hundred dollars by even two, that seems significant. Um, now, I 
kind of hate mid-roll ads, if I'm being honest. I hate it when they pop up when I'm watching other people's videos. So I've been really reticent to use them for a long time. And I realized that, you know, this is my entire income <laughs> right now. Like I need to make more money to make ends meet in this uh, COVID times and uh, in order to pull my uh, weight. And I, I realized I needed to experiment with this. I needed to turn these mid-roll ads on and see is my uh, advertising revenue going to go up by 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x? Who knows? Um, and in that case, it's you know it's probably going to be worth it. So the ads have been rolling for about three or so weeks at this point, and I have been really disappointed <laughs> in the uh, the effects so far. Um, I, I can't really see any impact. Uh, maybe the the overall ad revenue per day has gone up slightly. It's certainly nothing even remotely close to uh, 2x even, which. I was led to believe is kind of maybe the low end. So that is certainly a disappointment. Um, and I was also led to believe that these might increase YouTube uh, uh, suggesting my videos. So that would increase overall views, kind of playing into the system that YouTube wants because YouTube wants to make money. Um, I have not seen any impact in my overall views. In fact, they've gone down a little bit uh, over the last month. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these up for the next month or so, maybe a little bit longer. I'm going to keep the experiment going because maybe this just isn't enough data. Um, but if I'm not really seeing much of an increase in either of these metrics, then I'm probably going to turn them back off again because why annoy everybody if I'm not actually making more money for it? So um, that's why you're seeing them. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll continue to keep you updated as time goes on if I decide to make a change on this again. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is more general, um, uh, just an update on the tutorials that I've been doing. Uh, obviously, about a month ago, or I guess it was more like five weeks ago, I put out the last update vlog where I announced that I am no longer doing full playthroughs and I'm just doing tutorials. Um, at this point, I've now put out several of them. I haven't actually counted. Uh, I put out many over the last month and the reception has been good, I, I think, overall. Like um, in every video, there's usually at least one comment of somebody saying, I wish this was a full playthrough. I wish that hadn't changed. Uh, and in every video, there are several people saying, I understand why you're doing this and this content is still good for me to understand how the game plays. So um, I'm taking that as an overall positive. Um, uh, for me, uh, as far as you know, the things I was hoping to fix as far as my stress level and my unhappiness with doing that kind of work is concerned, um, I've been a lot less stressed and I have been a lot less uh, unhappy <laughs> with the work that I've been doing in John Gets Games. So as far as that's concerned, it's been a, a pretty huge success. So I guess I just wanted to uh, briefly talk about this and mention that so far it seems like it's going well um, and I am still all ears about constructive criticism for how I'm putting these together. Uh, there have been, been a couple videos where I actually start teaching like a round or two into the game because that feels like it's a better spot to teach the game. Um, in one video I played around then fast forwarded a bit and then played another round and have also mocked up some final scorings at the end. And, and so far people seem to like these things. But again, this is a very new thing. It's a pretty big change. And so I am open to uh, new ideas. So definitely uh, comment if you have more ideas about um, how I, uh, what directions I could take this in. Um, the last thing that I'd like to talk about as far as an update is concerned is a personal update. Um, uh, not really having to do with John Gets Games at all, but more just Jonathan Cox, how I'm doing. Uh, because I don't know, I, I like these updates to be as uh, transparent as possible. This is my time to speak as a human, not as a, you know, tutorial man <laughs> putting together these videos. Um, and uh, the, the honest answer of, of, to how I'm doing is um, I'm not doing great. Um, things have been rather rough. I'm not going to go into the details of it. Um, emotionally, I've been having a lot of swings. I am very happy to say that uh, the one best thing in my life is still uh, my relationship with Jessica, my wife. Um, I have zero problems with that. So I do want to be totally uh, transparent about that. But as far as every other aspect to my life. I'm just having troubles. Uh, I'm having entire days that I'm losing to doing absolutely nothing because I can barely get out of bed. Uh, I've cried a lot over the last few weeks uh, in really low moments where I'm just I'm just not sure why I am um, in this space. And so I am trying to fix this in a lot of different ways. Uh, some of these ways um, are adjacent to John Gets Games, you know, some of the tweaks like going away from extended playthroughs to lower stress because stress can be, you know, a leading cause to unhappiness. Um, but I'm not that stressed anymore and I'm still relatively unhappy with a lot of things. So I'm not really sure where I'm going right now. I'm still trying to open a bunch of doors. I'm taking this class still. I'm about six weeks out of eight weeks done with the first class for the project management course. And I can't say that it's going great. I uh, definitely had a lot of down moments <laughs> with trying to work through that over the last month. I've definitely had more time to work on it because I've been less stressed through John Gets Games. But at this point, I'm I'm really not sure 
where my problem is. Uh, and so I'm trying to work my way through it. I'm trying not to rush into things. Uh, and I'm trying to just stay focused on things and trying to, you know, keep Jongus Games going. Obviously, this is a very important thing for me mentally and also uh, financially. <laughs> um, but I guess I just, I like to pull the veil back with these sometimes and just talk about where I am as a person, like I said. And, you know, things are a little bit tough. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with uh, the quarantine and the fact that um, a previous career I had worked in for 12 years with the event production was ripped out from under my feet. Um, you know, I miss that. I miss doing the work. I miss the people that I've worked with there. I think I haven't really acknowledged that kind of uh, uh, loss, I guess. You know, I have very long ongoing relationships with a whole bunch of people that I've worked with uh, for years and years and years that I used to see every couple of weeks and we'd laugh and we'd talk about each other's families uh, and, you know, where we are as we're like climbing up ladders and doing all sorts of weird stuff for events. And I haven't had that since March. So who knows? Maybe that's part of the problem. Um, you know, maybe part of the problem is John Gets Games itself or maybe John Gets Games is just fine and I'm projecting my issues onto it. So I have a lot of soul searching to do. I have a lot of discussions that I'm going to be having with a lot of different people. And um, that's kind of where I am at personally. And uh, that's, I think, everything I want to share at this point. So uh, moving on to less emotional things, uh, let's talk about the shifting shelf. <laughs> let's talk about board games again. Uh, so uh, as always, what I talk about here is the new games that I've acquired over the last month and the games that I've decided to remove from my collection, uh, it, essentially to try and make room for those games. Things have been weird since the shelter in place went into place though, because I'm barely playing these games that are coming in. So when I acquire games, I feel really bad about removing games from my collection, but I did remove some, and in fact, I'm going to start with that. Um, I'm pulling off four uh, games from my collection into the cell pile. Uh, the first of these is Oceans. Um, I played this one a couple of times, and then I did a full playthrough for it, and it's kind of a, a new version of Evolution in the ocean. It fixed a lot of things I didn't like about Evolution, but ultimately, I'm not finding myself really thinking I'm going to want to be playing that game um, anymore. It's a fine game. I, I thought it had some really cool stuff with the building up of different um, uh, oceanic uh, animals trying to attack each other and whatnot. Like, there's definitely some cool stuff going on there, but I don't think it really plays to my strengths personally as, again, the board game or not necessarily John Gets Games, the overall entity. You know, this is just Jonathan Cox. What kind of games do I like? Oceans is fine. I could see myself playing it again, but it's a pretty big box. So I think I should probably clear up that space on the shelf. Um, next up is Sanctum. And honestly, I feel like I'm a, a, a broken record when it comes to these shifting shelf segments lately. Um, Sanctum was a fun game that I have played and it's a big box and I'm just not sure if I'm all that interested in getting back to it. So I think it's going to leave the collection and hopefully go on to somebody else who will enjoy it more than I am because again, I, I'm not really seeing it getting played. I'm not, I'm not really playing much at this point anyway. I'm just looking into the future and I just don't see myself really pushing to play it again. Um, the same could be said for Tiny Epic Tactics. Um, this was sent over to me uh, by Gamelin Games. I did a uh, sponsored uh, playthrough for that one for the Kickstarter campaign. They sent me a final production version of the game. And um, honestly, Tiny Epic Tactics is not really my style of game, um, just in general. So I haven't actually played this production version because I just don't really see it being a me type of thing. Um, normally, uh, when publishers send me copies of games um, or when they're planning on it, I can say yes or no if they want to send it. This one just showed up randomly one day at my doorstep. Uh, so I, I don't think it makes sense to keep this one any longer again because I think somebody could really be enjoying this one. Uh, the final one is Traintopia. I did a sponsored playthrough for that one um, a couple of months ago. Actually, I did uh, the behind the scenes video of me making that uh, that tutorial, which was pretty cool. The game itself is fun. You know, you're building out a, a, a network of little uh, squares, trying to make your trains, uh, your train lines as far as possible and as lucrative as possible. I thought it was fine. Um, but honestly, I played Carcassonne like three weeks ago, and I think I would just always rather play Carcassonne. So I think Traintopia is a fine game. It had some really neat ideas, but um, when it comes to a tile lane game where I'm just putting square tiles down, I'm still pretty stuck on the classic of Carcassonne, so I don't think it makes sense to keep that big box around. Uh, moving on to the new games that I've acquired, uh, the first one is Fort. Uh, that one I purchased. Uh, I got that one through the pre-order campaign. Um, at this point, I don't really have any relationship with letter games. Um, I've talked with them at conventions before, but nothing's ever really 
um, gotten rolling as far as uh, potentially sponsoring their videos or whatnot, but um, I think they make some pretty cool looking games. And this is a new version of SPQF, which uh, was uh, self-published by the designer Grant Rodiak. And I really liked that game. Well, I guess I really wanted to like that game, but it was cumbersome in some unfortunate ways. So um, this is a new streamlined version that got another round of development and some great art. And I've actually played this one once. Uh, I played it very, very wrong. Like I just totally butchered a very key rule. So I really can't give an honest opinion of it yet, but I can say that I enjoyed that one play, even though I got it very, very wrong. So I'm looking forward to playing that one correctly soon. Uh, and I'm glad I have a copy of it that I bought. Uh, I also got a press copy of Mariposas from, uh, uh, from AG. There we go. <laughs> uh, they sent that over to me. Uh, I have played that one already at this point, and I'm in the process of building a personal tabletop simulator mod for it so that I can play this with more players than just two. Uh, and I'm actually going to be filming a uh, a playthrough for this one, or I guess a tutorial, a tutorial playthrough for this one uh, soon. In fact, it's right over here. Ah, it's hiding over here on my uh, desk, uh, or I, I guess on my table. I'm planning on getting to this one hypothetically later on today. We'll we'll see. Uh, that one won the Patreon poll, or I guess it's one of the games that won the Patreon poll for this month. The other game that won is Fort. So actually, both of these games I've talked about so far are going to be getting a tutorial made by me, sponsored by the patrons of this channel. Uh, the last uh, game that I've acquired, <laughs> interestingly enough, is Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. Uh, much like Tiny Epic Tactics, this one just arrived out of the blue on my doorstep. Um, but this one, I do want to play. I remember uh, doing the sponsored tutorial playthrough for this one and thinking that um, it was pretty neat. Uh, it's got some worker placement stuff going on. It's got some spatial placement of your different dinosaurs into your area. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing where it went because I think they actually changed a couple of rules between uh, me filming the uh, tutorial for it for the campaign with the prototype to this final version. So I will be cracking that one open at some point to give it a shot in the future. All right, the final segment for this vlog is the upcoming schedule. So I'm going to briefly talk about what I'm planning on putting out as far as videos for the next four months, uh, four weeks, that is. Uh, I'm uh, not going to be committing to this. Some of these might actually change, but I can tell you right now that I'm hoping to get Mariposas out before the end of this week. And this is week 36 when this update's coming out. Uh, next week, I'll be doing my monthly live Q&A. Uh, that one is going to be on September 10th at 3 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, so I will try to put up a version of that onto the subscription feed a few days before to remind people, uh, but that's going to be about an hour long where I'll be just talking to people like I normally do. I, I generally really enjoy doing those Q&As. Uh, I am hoping to put out a uh, tutorial for Fort that week. I mentioned that that was another game that won the uh, the Patreon poll, so that one should go out that week. And I might do a Games Radar vlog that week. I'm not sure, but it's currently on the plan. We'll see if it actually happens. Uh, moving into week 38, um, I am likely going to be putting out a tutorial for a game called Brick and Mortar. Uh, I don't think the exact date has been set for this one just yet. I'm going to be putting it out to coincide with Kickstarter campaign. So it's possible it might not be that week, but it's possible that it might be. <laughs> so uh, that one's actually fully completed. It's just ready for the Kickstarter campaign to go. Uh, I'm also going to put out the bonus video uh, for that week. That one's um, uh, requested and voted on by the contributing producer level supporters uh, through Patreon. Uh, and it looks like they have picked Paladins of the West Kingdom. Uh, I actually don't own a copy of this game, but one of them lives close and they're going to lend me their copy so I can make a tutorial with their version of the game. So I'm going to have to do a social distanced uh, game swap at some point over the next couple weeks. Uh, and then looking on to week um, 39, um, I believe I'll be putting out my Project L uh, tutorial and full playthrough. That's the last full playthrough that I'll be publishing. I filmed this one a couple months ago. I think that's when that one's happening that week, but I can't be sure. Uh, hypothetically, in late September. Um, there's also a tutorial I'll be putting out for Shaolia that week, and maybe another one from uh, an unannounced game that I can't really talk about just yet. I haven't actually received that game yet, so I can't be sure, but it's possible. So that's the framework for what this next month is looking like. I'm not sure if I'm going to be putting out any impressions vlogs. I did say that I've played Fort incorrectly and I have played Mariposas once, um, but I'm not sure how many more new games I'll be playing. So it might be a little bit until an impressions vlog happens. Uh, me and three of my friends have started up a tabletop simulator version of the Rise of Queensdale uh, campaign game, or I guess legacy game. Um, and that one I think is gonna take many plays. So it's possible like when I played through uh, King's Dilemma, 
that I don't really put out many impressions vlogs because for the next month or two, I might be playing a lot of one specific game. But um, either way, that is going to finish up the upcoming schedule. And that's going to bring us to the end of this update vlog. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't really have anything else to say. I guess just doubling back to what I've talked about before, I'm still all ears for uh, constructive criticism for some of the changes I've been making for the channel. And um, looking forward to this month, there are some uh, pretty cool games. I'm looking forward to making the video for Mariposas and Fort in particular. And I haven't actually played Paladins of the West Kingdom before, so I'm gonna have to learn it and then actually make the video for it. And I've been curious to try it. So I guess this is sort of a way that I do get to try it. So um, that is what the next four weeks are looking like for me. And yeah, I think that is going to wrap this vlog up. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you would like to directly support the channel and the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.